Mayon. Mayon, also known as Mayon Volcano or Mount Mayon, is an active stratovolcano in the province of Albay in Baikal region, on the large island of Luzon in the Philippines. Renowned as the perfect cone because of its symmetric conical shape, the volcano with its surrounding landscape was declared a national park on July 20, 1938, the first in the nation. It was reclassified a natural park and renamed as the Mayon Volcano Natural Park in 2000. Local folklore refers to the volcano being named after the legendary princess heroine Daragang Magayan. Numerous festivals and rituals are associated with the volcano and its landscape. The volcano is the centerpiece of the Albay Biosphere Reserve, declared by UNESCO in 2016. Mayon is the main landmark and highest point of the province of Albay and the whole Baikal region in the Philippines, rising 2,462 meters from the shores of the Albay Gulf about 10 kilometers away. The volcano is geographically shared by the eight cities and municipalities of Legazpi City, Daraga, Camalique, Guinobatan, Ligeo City, Tabaco City, Malilipat, and Santo Domingo, which divide the cone like slices of a pie when viewing a map of their political boundaries. Mayon is a classic stratovolcano with a small central summit crater. The cone is considered the world's most perfectly formed volcano for its symmetry, which was formed through layers of lava flows and pyroclastic surges from past eruptions and erosion. The upper slopes of the basaltic andesitic stratovolcano are steep, averaging 35-40 degrees. Like other volcanoes around the Pacific Ocean, Mayon is a part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. It is on the southeast side of Luzon, close to the Philippine Trench, which is the convergent boundary where the Philippine Sea Plate sinks beneath the Philippine Mobile Belt. When an oceanic plate subducts, it releases water into the overlying mantle. The water lowers the melting point of the mantle and triggers melting that generates magma. The magma rises and erupts at the surface at a volcano like Mayon. Mayon is the most active volcano in the Philippines erupting over 47 times in the past 500 years. The first eruption for which an extended account exists was the six-day event of July 20, 1766. The most destructive eruption of Mayon occurred on February 1, 1814. Lava flowed but less than the 1,766 eruption. The volcano belched dark ash and eventually bombarded the town of Kigsawa with tephra that buried it. Trees burned and rivers were certainly damaged. Proximate areas were also devastated by the eruption, with ash accumulating to 9 m in depth. In Kixawa, 1,200 locals perished in what is considered to be the most lethal eruption in Mayon's history according to Favolks. The eruption is believed to have contributed to the accumulation of atmospheric ash together with the catastrophic 1,815 eruption of other volcanoes like Indonesia's Mount Tambora leading to the year without a summer in 1816. From July 6, 1881, until approximately August 1882, Mayon underwent a strong eruption. Samuel Neeland, a naturalist, professor, and geologist, personally observed the volcanic activity on Christmas Day, 1881, about five months after the start of the activity. At the date of my visit, the volcano had poured out, for five months continuously, a stream of lava on the Legaspi side from the very summit. The viscid mass bubbled quietly but grandly, and overran the border of the crater, descending several hundred feet in a glowing wave, like red-hot iron. Gradually, fading as the upper surface cooled, it changed to a thousand sparkling rills among the crevices, and, as it passed beyond the line of complete vision behind the woods near the base, the fires twinkled like stars or the scintillions of a dying conflagration. More than half of the mountain height was thus illuminated. Mayon's longest uninterrupted eruption occurred on June 23, 1897, which rained fire for seven days. Lava once again flowed down to civilization. Eleven kilometers eastward, the village of Bakake was buried 15 m beneath the lava. In Sto. Domingo 100 people were killed by steam and falling debris or hot rocks. Other villages like San Roque, Sta Misericordia, and Santo Nino became death traps. Ash was carried in black clouds as far as 160 kilometers from the catastrophic event, 
which killed more than 400 people. No casualties were recorded from the 1984 eruption after more than 73,000 people were evacuated from the danger zones as recommended by Favolk's scientists. But in 1993, pyroclastic flows killed 75 people, mainly farmers, during the eruption. At June 22, 1999 Mayan emitted an ash column that rose 710 km above the vent. The emission was recorded by the Seismic Network of the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology as an explosion that lasted for 10 minutes. No volcanic earthquakes nor other visible signs of abnormal activity were observed before the explosion. Mayan's 48th modern era eruption was on July 13, 2006, followed by quiet effusion of lava that started on July 14, 2006. Nearly 40,000 people were evacuated from the 8-kilometer danger zone on the southeast flank of the volcano. After an ash explosion of September 1, 2006, a general decline in the overall activity of Mayan was established. The decrease in key parameters such as seismicity, sulfur dioxide emission rates and ground inflation all indicated a waning condition. The slowdown in the eruptive activity was also evident from the decrease in intensity of crater glow and the diminishing volume of lava extruded from the summit. Filvalk's alert level 4 was lowered to level 3 on September 11, 2006, to level 2 on October 3, 2006, and to level 1 on October 25, 2006. On August 10, 2008, a small summit explosion ejected ash 200 meters above the summit which drifted east-northeast. In the weeks prior to the eruption, a visible glow increased within the crater and increased seismicity. On July 10, 2009, Favolks raised the status from Alert Level 1 to Alert Level 2 because the number of recorded low-frequency volcanic earthquakes rose to the same level as those prior to the 2008 phreatic explosion. At 5.32 a.m. on October 28, 2009, a minor ash explosion lasting for about one minute occurred in the summit crater. A brown ash column rose about 600 meters above the crater and drifted northeast. In the prior 24 hours, 13 volcanic earthquakes were recorded. Steam emission was at moderate level, creeping downslope toward the southwest. Favolks maintained the alert status at level 2 but later warned that with the approach of Tropical Cyclone International code name Myrony, the danger of lahars and possible crater wall collapse would greatly increase and all specified precautions should be taken. At 1.58 m on November 11, 2009, a minor ash explosion occurred at the summit crater lasting for about three minutes. This was recorded by the Seismic Network as an explosion-type earthquake with rumbling sounds. Incandescent rock fragments at the upper slope were observed in nearby barangays. Ash column was not observed because of cloud cover. After dawn, field investigation showed ash fall had drifted southwest of the volcano. In the 24-hour period, the seismic network recorded 20 volcanic earthquakes. Alert status was kept at level 2 indicating the current state of unrest could lead to more ash explosion or eventually to hazardous magmatic eruption. At 8 p.m. on December 14, 2009, after 83 volcanic quakes in the preceding 24 hours and increased sulfur dioxide emissions, Favolks raised the alert status to level 3. Early in the morning of December 15, 2009, a moderate ash explosion occurred at the summit crater and quiet extrusion of lava resulted in flows down to about 500 meters from the summit. By evening, Albay province authorities evacuated about 20,000 residents out of the 8-kilometer danger zone and into local evacuation centers. About 50,000 people live within the 8-kilometer zone. On December 17, 2009, five ash ejections occurred, with one reaching 500 meters above the summit. Sulfur dioxide emission increased to 2,758 tons per 24 hours, Lava flows reached down to 1,500 meters below the summit, and incandescent fragments from the lava pile continuously rolling down Bonga Gully reached a distance of 3-4 km below the summit. By midday, a total of 33,833 people from 7,103 families had been evacuated, 72% of the total number of people that needed to be evacuated, 
according to Albay Governor Joey Salceda. On December 20, 2009, Favolx raised Mayon's status level to Alert Level 4 because of an increasing lava flow in the southern portion of the volcano and an increase in sulfur dioxide emission to 750 tons per day. Almost 460 earthquakes in the volcano were monitored. In the border of the danger zone, rumbling sounds like thunder were heard. Over 9,000 families were evacuated by the Philippine government from the base of the volcano. No civilian was permitted within the 8km danger zone, which was cordoned off by the Philippine military who actively patrolled to enforce the no-go rule and to ensure no damage or loss of property of those evacuated. Alert Level 4 was maintained as the volcano remained restive through December, prompting affected residents to spend Christmas and the New Year in evacuation centers. On December 25, sulfur dioxide emissions peaked at 8,993 tons per day. On December 28, Favolk's director Renato Solidum commented on the status of the volcano, you might think it is taking a break but the volcano is still swelling. On the next day December 29, a civil aviation warning for the airspace near the summit was included in the volcano bulletins. The ejected volcanic material since the start of the eruption was estimated to have been between 20 million to 23 million cubic meters of rocks and volcanic debris, compared to 50 million to 60 million cubic meters in past eruptions. On January 2, 2010, Favolx lowered the alert level of the volcano from level 4 to level 3, citing decreasing activity observed over the prior four days. The state agency noted the absence of ash ejections and relative weakness of steam emissions and the gradual decrease in sulfur dioxide emissions from a maximum of 8,993 tons per day to 2,621 tons per day. 7,218 families within the 7-8 km danger zones returned to their homes, while 2,728 families residing in the 4-6 km danger zone remained in the evacuation centers pending a decision to further lower the alert level. On January 13, 2010, Favolx reduced the alert level from 3 to 2 due to a further reduction in the likelihood of hazardous eruption. Albay Governor Joey Salceda declared the disaster zone an open city area to encourage aid from external groups. Potential donors of relief goods were not required to secure clearance from the Provincial Disaster Coordinating Council, and were coordinated directly with support groups at the local government level. The restiveness of the volcano also stimulated the tourism industry of the province. Up to 2,400 tourists per day arrived in the area in the two weeks after the volcano started erupting on December 14, filling local hotels, compared to a more modest average of 200 in the days prior. However it was reported that some tourists lured by local guides ignored government warnings not to venture into the 8km danger zone. It's a big problem. I think the first violation of the zero casualty will be a dead tourist, said Salceda. Speaking about thrill seekers finding their way into the area, Salceda warned, at the moment of the eruption, the local guides will have better chance of getting out. The helpless tourist will be left behind. Following the declaration of Alert Level 3 for the volcano, the United States issued an advisory cautioning its nationals from traveling to Mayon. Canada and the United Kingdom also posted advisories discouraging their nationals from visiting the volcano. The United States government committed $100,000 in financial aid for the evacuees of Mayon. In cooperation with the Philippine government the assistance was delivered through the Philippine National Red Cross and other NGOs by USAID. The Albay provincial government ordered the local military to add more checkpoints, place roadblocks, and arrest tourists caught traveling inside the 8km danger zone. Power and water supply were cut off within the danger zone to further discourage residents from returning. The Commission on Human Rights allowed the use of emergency measures and gave the authorities clearance to forcibly evacuate residents who refused to leave. When the alert level around the volcano was lowered from Alert Level 4 to Alert Level 3 on January 2, 2010, the Albay provincial government ordered a decampment of some 47,000 displaced residents from the evacuation centers. Power and water supply in the danger zones were restored. Military vehicles were used to transport the evacuees back to their homes, 
while food supplies and temporary employment through the Department of Social Welfare and Development were provided to the heads of each family. As of January 3, 2010, the National Disaster Coordinating Council reported the overall cost of humanitarian aid and other assistance provided by the government and non-government organizations has reached over 61 million pesos since the start of the eruption. The United Nations World Food Programme delivered 20 tons of high-energy biscuits to the evacuees to complement supplies provided by the DSWD, with more allocated from emergency food stocks intended for relief from the effects of the 2009 Pacific Typhoon season. When the alert level was downgraded to level 3 on January 2, 2010, UN WFP provided three days worth of food for evacuees returning to their homes who will continue to receive supplies already set aside for them. On May 7, 2013, at 8 am, the volcano produced a surprise phreatic eruption lasting 73 seconds. Ash, steam, and rock were produced during this eruption. Ash clouds reached 500 meters above the volcano's summit and drifted west-southwest. The event killed five climbers, of whom three were German, one was a Spaniard living in Germany, and one was a Filipino tour guide. Seven others were reported injured. The bodies of the hikers were soon located by the authorities. However, due to rugged and slippery terrain, the hikers' remains were slowly transferred from Camp 2 to Camp 1 the site of the rescue operations at the foot of the volcano. According to Dr. Butch Rivera of Baikal Regional Training and Teaching Hospital, the hikers died due to trauma in their bodies, and suffocation. Authorities were also able to rescue a Thai national who was unable to walk due to fatigue and had suffered a broken arm and burns on the neck and back. Despite the eruption, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology stated that the alert level would remain at zero. No volcanic earthquake activity was detected in the 24 hours prior to the eruption, and no indication of further intensification of volcanic activity was observed. And no evacuation was being planned. The government of the United Kingdom advised its nationals to follow the advisories given by the local authorities, and respect the 6 km permanent danger zone. The advisory was given a day after the May 7, 2013 phreatic explosion. On August 12, 2014, a new 30M50M high lava dome appeared in the summit crater. This event was preceded by inflations of the volcano, and increases in sulfur dioxide gas emissions. On September 14, 2014, rockfall events at the southeastern rim of the crater and heightened seismic activity caused Favolks to increase the alert level for Mayon from 2 to 3 which indicates relatively high unrest with magma at the crater, and that hazardous eruption is possible within weeks. The rock falls and visible incandescence of the crater from molten lava and hot volcanic gas both indicated a possible incipient breaching of the growing summit lava dome. On September 15, 2014, NASA's moderate resolution imaging spectroradiometer detected thermal anomalies near Mayon's summit, consistent with magma at the surface. On September 16, 2014, Provincial Governor Joey Salceda said that the government would begin to fast-track the preparation to evacuate 12,000 families in the 6-8 km extended danger zone, and soldiers would enforce the no-go areas. On September 18, 2014, Favolks reported 142 VT earthquake events and 251 rockfall events. White steam plumes drifted to the south-southwest and rain clouds covered the summit. Sulfur dioxide emission was measured at an 757 tons after a peak of 2,360 tons on September 6. Ground deformation during the third week of August 2014 recorded edifice inflation. On January 13, 2018, at 4.21 p.m., a phreatic eruption occurred that propelled a grayish steam and ash plume approximately 2,500 meters high that drifted to the southwest side of the volcano. The activity lasted approximately 1 hour and 47 minutes and traces of ash fell Indiana Baranga Ianoliang, Daraga, Baranga East Sua, Quirangay, Tumpa, Isla Wad, and Salugan of Kamalik and in Baranga East Tandarora, Maninila, and Trevisia in Guinobatan. Sulfuric odor was noted by residents of Kamalik town proper. 
Rumbling sounds were also heard by residents of BRGY. Anoliang, Daraga and Rockfall events were intermittently recorded. Faint crater glow was first observed at 10.16 pm. The event prompted Favolk's dust to raise the alert level of Mayan Volcano from alert level 1 to alert level 2. About 40,000 residents were displaced in the resulting evacuation. On January 14, 2018, Mayan Volcano's alert status was upgraded to alert level 3 after three phreatic eruptions and 158 rockfall events were recorded. The summit crater also exhibited a bright glow signifying the growth of a new lava dome and the start of lava flows towards its slopes. On January 16, 2018, the province of Albay declared a state of calamity as lava flows reached the limits of the 6km evacuation zone. On January 22, 2018, alert level 4 was raised after Mayan spewed a 3km tall ash column at around 12.45 pm classes in all levels in private and public schools were suspended in the whole province of Albay. By evening, lava fountains were spewed from the crater with pyroclastic flows and ash plumes. Lava bombs and rockfalls could also be observed and rumbling sounds from the eruptions could be heard. The eruption type was classified as a Strombolian eruption. On January 23, 2018, Mayan spewed 300 to 500 meter lava fountains and ash plumes with a 4 to 5 hour interval. Lava bombs and rockfalls could also be observed and sounds from the volcano could be heard. Classes in all levels, both public and private were still suspended, work in some places were suspended as well. The danger zone was expanded up to 9 km despite remaining at alert level 4 and residents from the expanded danger zone were evacuated. On January 24, 2018, column of ashes and lava fountains were spewed again with an interval of 4 to 5 hours. Fire bombs and rockfalls could also be observed and sounds from the eruptions could be heard. Classes remain suspended in some places in Albay. On January 25, 2018, column of ashes and lava fountains were spewed again. Fire bombs and rockfalls could also be observed and sounds from the eruptions could be heard. The eruptions had an interval of 3 to 5 hours. Classes still remain suspended in some places in Albay. Alert level 4 was maintained at the volcano for the rest of January and all throughout the month of February as it remained restive. On March 6, 2018, after observing a decline in volcanic activity, Favolk's dust downgraded the alert level back to alert level 3. On March 29, 2018, after observing a further decline in activity, Favolk's dust lowered the alert level back to alert level 2 signifying the end of Mayan's eruptive activity and the volcano's decline to a moderate level of unrest. On December 26, 2018, Mayan caused two phoretic explosions but maintains alert level 2. On November 30, 2006, strong rainfall which accompanied Typhoon Durian produced lahars from the volcanic ash and boulders of the last eruption killing at least 1,266 people. The precise figure may never be known since many people were buried under the mudslides. A large portion of the village of Padong was covered in mud up to the house's roofs. Students from Aquinas University in Baranga Irawis, also in Legazpi, were among those killed as mudslides engulfed their dormitory. Central Legazpi escaped the mudslide but suffered from severe flooding and power cuts. Parts of the town of Daraga were also devastated, including the Kagsawa area, where the ruins from the eruption of 1814 were partially buried once again. Large areas of Ginobatan, Albay were destroyed particularly Baranga Imaban. A similar post-eruption lahar occurred in October 1766, months after the July eruption of that year. The heavy rainfall also accompanying a violent typhoon carried down disintegrated fragmental ejecta, burying plantations and whole villages. In 1825, the event was repeated in Kagsawa killing 1,500 people. Mayan is the most active volcano in the Philippines and its activity is regularly monitored by Favolks from their provincial headquarters on Lignan Hill, about 12 km SSE from the summit. Three telemetric units are installed on Mayan slopes, 
which send information to the seven seismometers in different locations around the volcano. These instruments relay data to the Lignan Hill Observatory and the Favolk's central headquarters on the University of the Philippines Diliman campus. Favolk's also deploys electronic distance meters, precise leveling benchmarks, and portable fly spectrometers to monitor the volcano's daily activity. Mayon has been featured as part of the design of Philippine money.